microbes living in the soil oh, yes. on Mars, everything changes. Your life suddenly gets a lot more complicated, and your sci-fi series goes into endless reruns. <laughs> <laughs> and they demand new shows. And a lot of people will probably talk to me in NASA who haven't talked to me in years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we could be on the threshold of something really interesting. Now, remember, I was the one at the Libertarian con- Conference. Yes, you were. In, in May, the night that uh, Phoenix landed, that said that um, the White House probably was going to announce this before this election. Well, when, when you look at the mantle of change that John McCain has wrapped around himself now, it would be so fitting if the Bush White House, as their final positive thing they could do for an heir apparent, were to bequeath to John McCain the stunning news that there, in fact, is an inhabited solar system out there, and it's us and little tiny microbe-type guys on Mars. Or more. That would, well, what that would do, in, they would only have to announce that. What people would do in their own imaginations is take it to where it obviously goes. Exactly. Because... If you have microbes, as Carl said, you know, it means that life has developed independently on two planets of the same solar system. Ergo, there's no limit to who or what could be living in the big galaxy, Mr. Scott, beyond that could maybe find a way, given a more advanced technology, to come here. And then you have, of course, the body of evidence from the last 60 years, Roswell et al., that somebody has been coming here and looking us over really closely for a very long period of time. By the way, I want to clear up something as long as we're on the subject. Somebody got the idea that I came on here and said that I did not think that UFOs as representatives of ET technology were real. No, you've never said that. I've never said that. What I've said is that we ourselves, the human species, among certain elite groups, have sequestered the information for how to build those vehicles away from the general population. And that if somebody were to suddenly appear over major cities in a kind of a disclosure event, the odds are it would not be genuine ETs. It would be our guys running a scam, a so-called false flag in, in, in invasion. Uh, I, you know what, Friday night I had a quote. I had the uh, audio clip of Carol Rosen talking ah. about that and uh, what Devon Braun had told her. In, uh, it seems like we're headed that way. Well, based on the series that we put on the web, the Von Braun series, you know, what did Von Braun know and when did he know it? Um, I can now demonstrate that Von Braun tripped over the idea that Newtonian gravity and Einsteinian relativity are not the last word in physics, and that he spent a lot of time quietly looking at frontier and cutting-edge physicists who basically were looking at alternative, radically different theories for how gravity works and how you might create anti-gravity than anyone would possibly imagine, given his background as a missile guy and launching satellites and building the Saturn V for, for the Apollo program. Based on that knowledge, George, I believe that when he told Carol what he told her, it was based on his personal knowledge that there, in fact, was some group developing this technology that politically at the appropriate time would basically jump in to the international scene and make some extraordinary claims and appearances for the purpose of misleading all of us into another direction of history. And that he was trying to warn her, based on his knowledge, that the physics that makes that possible is here on Earth right now. Let's take some calls, and I definitely want to talk with you about your theory with Tom Van Flandern about Mars, because I need you to explain something about the water. But okay. let's go to you, David, in Anchorage, Alaska, west of the Rockies. Hey, David, thanks for calling. This is really an honor, Richard. I um, have been listening to you ever since uh, White Springs days, if you oh my God. says. So, you know, I really, and, and you've got me interested in alternative energies, and and I well, consider myself at least. Well, it's the only thing that's going to save us, and hopefully we now have a window where people are mad as hell and they're not going to be satisfied with concealment of really radical space-born energy technologies that are, and this is the most important part, democratizable. 
What we want when we make this new transition to the next energy future of the, of the planet, we don't want any more resources but a handful of tin-plated delusions of godhood, to quote, you know, Scotty uh, on Star Trek, can yep. get away with hijacking all the rest of us because they own it and we don't. We well, need democratizable yeah. so-called free energy, and the technology is out there. It's just the, te- the technology threat. is out there. It absolutely is out there, and, and, and that's what a lot of people don't know. The zero-point energy or the energy from the vacuum. That so whatever you want to call it, it's all the same stuff. They, they call it many different things, but it's all basically the same thing. And, and, and it, this is what CERN, they're trying to find this by just, um, actually getting their hands on a Bose or a Higgs boson. Mm-hmm. And, um, but you know as well as I do that we already have the technology. We don't need to risk the planet to try to find out something we already know. Well, see, that gets into the political realm that George and I were discussing a little while ago. The thing that bothers me most is the political arrogance of these people because it's like they're trying to reinvent the wheel. And frankly, I, I, I think they're really honest but dumb guys. And there's, there's two sets of books. There's two sets of physics. There's the real there physics is. that mm-hmm. make possible the things that you and I were just discussing. And then there's well, the you, you know about physics. super systems, and these guys basically are in denial of it on that end, on the yeah, well, energy end. They're a lot completely of them are not so much in denial system. as they have been carefully been, been manipulated. Remember, the only way a physicist knows about reality, unless he's an experimental physicist, and there are very few of those, is by reading the papers of the guys that are actually doing the experiments. If those now, papers I'm, are cooked, if the results are manipulated, if the skies on Mars are blue and not red, everybody, then how is the average scientist going to know? The average scientist, particularly when he gets out of his specialty, is as ignorant as all the rest of us are about all the specialty stuff that we're told about constantly is going to kill us on this day and save us on the next day. And we, don't, we have nowhere to turn. We don't know how to find out the truth for ourselves because science now, has become a priesthood as opposed to to the process of discovery that it used to be and has to become again. You said it almost exactly the way um, Tom Bearden would have said it. <laughs> now, Tom's yes, and she, you, know, you know my references here. Now, um, now, you know as well as I do, too, that there are levels of technology out there that even predate Tesla, which are technologies that would produce all the energy we could ever possibly use as consume as human beings. And they're, they're free and readily available. Well, that's what Von Braun, if you read the series, tripped over, was basically free energy, which was a double whammy. Because A, anti-gravity can't be allowed, because what does that do to the bottom line? And B, free energy, oh my God, if you give them free energy, we can't control them anymore. So the next energy transition, which is coming at warp nine, cannot be drill, drill, drill. That is the stupidest thing, because what it does is put more money into the hands of the people who've been picking our pocket for the last hundred years in terms of oil. It's not the answer. So true. Let's take some other calls. Say thanks for your call, by the way, David. Let's go to East of the Rockies, Bill, in Chicago. Hey, Bill. Yeah, scientists at Fermi Lab discovered a new subsonic particle and the particle is called omega dash sub dash b and it's in the chicago sun times thursday edition and this particle travels at um, one trillionth of one second and it travels at one millimeter and decays into lighter particles so if you want to look up the article just contact sun times okay. thursday all right great and one more thing. Okay, sir. When I worked for the Manhattan Project, there were two groups of scientists, and one wanted to build a super bomb, which was so powerful they had to explode it in outer space. And another scientist, by uh, um, oh, Dr. Oppenheimer, didn't want want to to, to explode it. So they took Hoppenheimer's uh, security away. Huh. Did you know that, that, Richard? Yeah, that was the whole contretemp between him and Teller. And Teller eventually had his security clearance removed, which, by the way, President Kennedy restored before he was killed. That's interesting. Eric, trucking around in California. You're on with us. 
Hi, Eric. Hi, guys. I uh, I had a comment about the Hadron Collection.